and we're all pulled by our emotions and we relate to other people based on our emotions too. We're, we're pulled, we're not relating to each other personally. We're, we're sort of relating to each other based on this emotional feeling that we have that we've built up over decades prior. And in the laws of human nature, you discuss, look, the person you're meeting, the person you're interacting with, they're kind of this wad of coagulated emotional baggage, for lack of a better word, right. that's built up from their childhood through their right. teenage years. And then this is what we're projecting onto the world. And that's who we're meeting in our day-to-day -day lives. And you, you actually said this is liberating. Why do you feel like that's liberating? What is liberating? The knowledge? The, the idea that we're just emotion, emotion balls bouncing around the world and not really relating to one another personally on a real level. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, the liberating fact is you go around thinking everything is personal. Wow, that person was cold to me in that meeting. God damn, they don't like me. They're a bitch. They're, I don't like Something's mm -hmm. fucking wrong with her, you know? You go around, everything is personal. Oh, why did he say that? Why is my mom telling me this, blah, blah, blah? And I'm telling you, it's not personal. That's the liberating fact. People are wrapped up in their own emotions, their own traumas. They're reliving things from their childhood. They get angry at you, but you're not really the trigger. The trigger is something that happened to them when they were four or five or 20 or whatever. So to realize that it's not personal, that people are acting out of their own dramas, their own traumas, their own emotional problems from way back, should be a very, should kind of take all the burdens away from you. So you don't have to react and get, take things personally. It's extremely liberating to be rid of all of that emotional baggage that you assume from other people, thinking that they're, they have something about, against you or that they're reacting about you know, something personal. So that's the liberating aspect. But the thing is, we're social animals to the core, right? You wouldn't be here talking without all the, the billions of people who created language before you, without your education, without your parents, without your teachers. They have molded you. They have made you who you are. So we are not really individuals. We are built by other people by being social. We're kind of a conglomerate of all these other interactions of relationships. And so um, we're really generally kind of bad at this aspect of life um, because we don't understand other people. We assume that we have, we take like a sort of a simple snapshot of people. They're nice, they're not nice, they're pleasant, they're not pleasant, they're smart or not smart. But people are infinitely complicated, complex. They have uh, a wealth of emotions. They're going through things that you're not even beginning to see. And if you can begin to pierce their mask and get inside their psychology and understand where they're coming from, suddenly the whole game changes. And what you say and how you act with them will change as well. And you will find your relationships are much more smoother. Your bonds with people will be much deeper. And you'll be able to deal with those ugly, toxic types that inevitably cross your path. I think being in LA right now, which is kind of the West Coast headquarters of Toxicity. lower human oh. nature, if you yeah. will. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, very nice place you have here. <laughs> but it's true. But we do see a lot of that here. We see it in every big city, of course. I, I think LA gets a, the rap for that on west of the Mississippi, possibly. Yeah. And the book actually helps us focus on our higher nature so that we can avoid succumbing to the. I feel like the lower nature really pulls on us. Yeah. It's it's sort of the default. If we just sit in our inner tube with our hands behind our head and crack open a six pack of beer, the river of dark nature takes us towards that waterfall of the, of the, the shadow. Yeah. Well, think of it this way. Let's say you want to make something in life. You want to start a business. You want to write a book. You want to create a podcast. It takes a lot of work. And that work isn't fun, right? It involves a lot of tedious detail. Mm -hmm. It involves dealing with people who aren't listening to you. They don't immediately respond to your idea. You have to deal with frustration and you have to be disciplined. That's not fun, right? And right. our default position in life is to always want things to be fun and easy, right? We take the path of least resistance. So when we're children, if we weren't educated, if we didn't have teachers or parents telling us to study, we'd be these monsters. 
I think it was the poet Coleridge that compared it to a garden that's never tended and it just turns into weeds. That's what children would become if there was nobody educating them. That's who would we would become if there was nobody instilling in us a sense of discipline. So when you're working as a 12-year-old, 13-year-old, developing a work ethic and discipline, you're actually tapping into what I call your higher nature. We admire the fact that great buildings were built, great bridges, and our cities are marvels of technology, and we have museums and all this. That was built by people who were masters at their field, who delved into the, who, who, you know, connected to this higher nature. They were disciplined, they worked hard, they put their energy into their work, not into at getting attention and not into their ego. And so that is the higher nature that all of us have as a potential. And whenever you stop thinking about yourself and start putting your mind into your work or put your mind into other people and their problems, you're tapping into that higher nature. And it feels good. It feels fulfilling. It doesn't feel fulfilling to go home, smoke pot, and play a video game. It's kind of fun and it's kind of mindless. I don't deny that. But the next day, you don't feel like that. there's no sense of accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, true. There's no sense of, wow, I, I'm doing something, I'm building something. And we want that feeling. So that is the higher nature that I'm talking about. And I'm trying to bring that out in this book. At the end of every chapter, which you could sort of say is slightly negative, narcissism, irrationality, you know, on and on. The chapter is about kind of a, f a slight flaw in our chemistry, right? But at the end of each chapter, I show how you can take that and turn it around. How you can take the lower nature and turn it into something positive. Right. To give you a simple example, I believe we humans naturally feel envy. Everybody feels envy. We don't like to admit it. I'm envious that Ryan sold more, you know, is higher, listed higher on the business bestseller sure. list on Amazon than I am. Ryan Holiday, who was just here. Yeah. yeah. And you, okay. he, he, you kind of mentored him early on. He fixed your Wikipedia page. He was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, he still now, is actually. And now he's outshone me. You yeah. know, he's, anyway, I can admit that I feel envy. And so I want you to get to that same place. Mm -hmm. And where it comes from is it's the chimpanzee in us. It's been shown that primates are very attuned to other animals in, the, in their clan and they're constantly comparing themselves. Who's the alpha chimp? Who has more than I have? We are, by our nature, the way our minds were, continually comparing ourselves to other people who you know, they have a better job, they're making more money, their book is selling more, etc. And that's the source of envy, right? I mean, that's oh, yeah. deep underneath the source of envy. But that constant comparing to people, which is so endemic on social media, has the potential to be turned into something positive. It can turn into the desire to compete, and, and instead of envying what that other person has, to actually achieve it for yourself, and to emulate great people, and try and you know, instead of envying some really good writer, why don't I become that good writer and sell enough books so I don't have to feel envy? This, I mean, I try and show other ways how that comparing mechanism can actually tap into our higher nature.